We're pleased to have Comrade Peter Bamidele Oyerewoli, the General Secretary, Campaign for Constitutionalism and Human Rights in the Sahara TV studio today. Comrade, it's a pleasure having you in our uh, studio. Thank you. Good morning. There's been a lot of cries, furor, and you know, anger in the land mm. against the Fulani headsmen's mm. incessant killings mm. across uh, mm. the sections of the country. Mm. What's your reaction? What's your organization reaction to stand on this issue? Uh, thank you very much. I think from the beginning of the uh, this crisis, if you trace it back to like two, three years back, uh, at the level of CCHR, I mean Campaign for Constitutionalism and Human Rights, we have emphasized this kind of uh, criminality that is going on. And I could remember the executive secretary of this organization has made a lot of press releases, you know, regards this matter right from the beginning of this crisis. But it is quite unfortunate that uh, we have a government that, is, uh, that didn't take it uh, very serious, ab issue, And, you know, the thing started uh, uh, escalating, the crisis began. You know, you know the, the number one, the, the one that happened that, you know, caught the attention of the general public was one that happened in London State some two years ago when the Baba Lufalai was uh, uh, kidnapped and uh, kept for days. In fact, demanding for ransom, a whole lot of it, destroy his farmland. Now, we were worried then that if this type of issue can happen to a person, the former uh, Secretary of the Government of the Federation, for, for, for that matter, and the government, you know, could be so, you know, show a kind of nonchalant attitude towards it, not taking it serious, then how come what happens to a, a, a common Nigerian, as we people, people call it, you know? So, we, we, we have been expressing our worry right from the beginning. We have seen it as a, uh, a kind of a criminality against humanity and a kind of an actions that ought not to have even know, been allowed to take place. Fine, if, you, if, so, if a group or an individual is having a criminal uh, action within himself, once he attempts carrying it out, then he needs to be curbed from the beginning. But here, here is our government that has not done this and we are not happy. We see these as a failure on the top of the government. We see these as a kind of government that, is, that doesn't listen to the cry of the masses. That is what CCHR has seen this. Now, talking about the attitude of the federal government, mm. the presidency as a matter of fact, mm. how will you assess their reactions so far? I mean, you talked about the fact that they are known challenge mm. as far as this is concerned. Mm. Why is it taking so long a time for the... Well, the presidency has refused to, to tag this group as a terrorist. I think if you ask, you ask this question, the presidency should come out and tell us the, the, the reason for this, uh, for this late uh, response. Because in the last two, three days, we are beginning to see the side of a government, perhaps we don't know if it is hypocritical action or what have you, because this ought to have happened a long time ago. They should come out and tell us why it has taken them this long. But to our, our, on our own side, we see a government that didn't believe in something that is real, you know? We see a government that doesn't listen to the voice that are far, but only listen to the voice that are so close to the presidency. And it's quite unfortunate today we can agree, we and I will agree together that we have those that are close to the government, to the president, are not, you know, those that would, you know, say it as it is. But I think the, the government of the people the government of the masses should do more than, you know, listening to those that are close to him. And even take a kind of personal survey, perhaps on social media, perhaps on, you know, reading the newspaper and hear what, listen to radios, televisions, and hear what people are saying. Not what has been, you know, said to his hearing. You get it? But to us, we, 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 we cannot answer for them. They should come and tell us. But to us, if you have to conclude, we are seeing a government that is not sensitive to the plight of the people. That is why it has been taking them this long. Maybe, you know, because of the level of killing that has happened now in the Benue state in the last uh, one week, they are beginning to like, ah, perhaps this is real. Or perhaps the, maybe the governor of the state now has stopped his uh, crocodile, uh, you know, tears and come out uh, hard to, you know, explain that, no, this thing is not, is real. Perhaps he's now listening to the voice of one of his children. I mean the president now, because the governor of Benue State is one of his allies. So perhaps it is the, the, the level of you know, pain that, that grieved the heart of the governor now 
media, okay, let's see how we can, you know, uh, attend to them. And I think this goes beyond the governor because before it can, I, I don't, I'm not sure the governor, uh, Phil and Hesme will go to the governor's house or the governor's office and attack the governor to attack the people. So if it is the voice of the governor now, now, now you know, bringing the presidency to come out now, I think it is quite unfortunate. Very, now, very unfortunate. Do you see any hypocrisy as far as this government? Is yes, I, uh, of course. Where, when Boko Haram started, mm. they, brought, they brought out the military against them. Mm. When mm -hmm. uh, IPOP came up, it was military. They, they, they brought out the military. Mm. Now, they, with the Fulani headsmen, mm. especially with the killing uh, mm. in Benway, they mm. now brought out the police. Mm. What does that tell you about the security architecture? Even look at beyond the issue of IPOP and Boko Haram. You know, Fulani headsmen now, to the best of our knowledge, they have not started using a, a bomb, but like Boko Haram. Uh, the little we heard about uh, IPOP, they did not use bomb, neither did they use gun. But here is Boko Haram. If I, one of the reports we got this morning was that in Benue State, one of these villages that police were deployed to, the Boko Haram, there was shooting. So they said that they repel. You know, I was expecting the police to repel the attack of the uh, but this one has been repelled the police. It shows you that these guys are more sophisticated, better equipped, well armed. Now, come to think of it, IPOP, what do they do? How do they, what is their model of operandi? They move in masses. They protest. You know? It is quite unfortunate that our mobile police, that doesn't mean that our mobile police cannot even curb an ordinary possession that will have to deploy an army down there. Let's leave that alone. About two, two three months ago, Operation Crocodile Smile started in the southwest part of Nigeria. Not even in those states, because we have seen the action of Lani Hesmen in those states, but rather in Lagos and Ogun states. Perhaps you can remind us the kind of level of crisis that are going on in Lagos and Ogun states, if we don't know. The government should come and justify the reason for the massive deployment of soldiers to the relatively the most peaceful states in Nigeria. Why in Taraba states, in Benue states, Enugu states, so many states, Fulani Hesmen are being, you know, are doing what nobody can even challenge them. And you are deploying police with less equipment. What a level of hypocrisy. Does it mean this government is not coming to, so that they will not say we did not act? I think it would have even been better for the government not to even act and allow the people to resolve to self-help. Allow the people to resolve to self-help to, to self than this national embarrassment. When I listened, when I read the news this morning, that the, the, the Fulani has been repair, they, they, they chase the police out of that place. You begin to think of it. So a level, a high level of hypocrisy, and that's, that is why we are saying that this government, right from inception, has shown us that it's biased. Some level of, you know, Using a, using a deodorant for those that are close to him and using insecticide for the presumed enemies. Okay. That's, that's. So what proactive measures could be, should be taken at this point in time by the federal government to stem the tide of this? Uh, uh, the, 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 it is simple. It is simple. The law of the land is, there is no body that is above the law. At the level of CCHR, we believe that there is God Almighty at the hems of our fear. After God, what is next to God is not you and I, it is the law. Every other person, including you and I, we are under the law, including the president himself. So nobody is above the law except the ultimate. Now, if that now happens, use the law, apply the law of the land to bring down peace to our land. Let me say this. Maybe we should remind this government the reason why he ought to have acted a long time ago. Why this government was coming on board, some of the promises given to Nigerians was the fact that they are going to diversify the economy of this country. And agriculture is one of the uh, key sectors this government promised to diversify you know, our economy into. Now, in Benue State, we don't know them to be fishermen. They are not into textiles. They are not into technologies. What they are into is food. We call them the food basket of the nation. 
And if you see a group of people now attacking, destroying, you know, their farm product, which they could have brought to you and I. And the government has, you know, they should tell us this, their level of sincerity when it comes to diversification of the economy. Don't forget the Minister of Agriculture. It's on that very state. What are they? Part of the hypocrisy we are talking about. So, if they don't, if they really want us to take them serious, at least by now we should give them the ultimatum that we shouldn't hear any kind of full enhancement attack. Deploy what needed to be deployed. Remember some years, maybe less than two years, the Mieti Allah paid a courtesy call to the presidency and the president had a meeting with them. At the end of that meeting, we didn't hear what the president said to you know, whether the president has even told them that, okay, this act, this act, this act, this act should be stopped. So we know, the government know. The government should not tell us that with a level of high level of uh, uh, apparatus and uh, 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 security agencies they have, they cannot gather the intelligent report on how these people operate, who are behind this. You should not come and tell us that. If they are coming, they don't know the source of these people. Then they should just agree that, yes, we need to leave the leadership because we cannot guarantee the security of these people. And don't forget, the happiness of the people and not their destruction is the first and only legitimate responsibility of any serious government. And if a government couldn't provide this, then there is a problem. Thank you.